Today's history lesson takes us to the year 2020. The Laysathian people are still reeling from the effects of the civil war that tore apart their nation. However, they're unaware that their leader, Diego Gaspar Navarro, still had plans for them. South Osea was poised to become the stage of yet another conflict. The Aurelian War, a war waged by the impoverished Democratic Republic of Laysath against its southern neighbor, the Federal Republic of Aurelia. Within the first 10 days, the large and advanced Lay Sathian military seized over 95% of Aurelian territory, decimating the front lines and catching the Aurelian military off guard, who were unprepared for their enemy's onslaught. It sure seemed like a quick and easy victory was within Laysath's grasp. Though suffering heavy losses, the Aurelian Air Force still had some fight left in them. Thanks to the efforts of Gryphus I, Aurelia's rising ace, the Aurelians were able to reclaim lost ground and turn the tide of the war during the pivotal battle of Santa Elva. The engagement over Santa Elva saw Laysat's advanced airborne fortress, the Glaipnir, shot down by the Southern Cross. This caused Laysathian troops to retreat to the occupied Aurelian capital, Griswold. Filled with a renewed sense of hope, Aurelius' forces began to push back on all fronts. But Navarro remained unfazed by the loss of the Glaipnir. The battle data gathered from the Glaipnir would be invaluable for his next project, the Fenrir. Hello friends and fans, my name is Salutis Eversol, and this is Strange Real History. I think this calls for a little history lesson. The XFA-33 Fenrir is a unique, next-generation, multi-role aircraft developed by Laysath researchers and engineers. Compared to other superplanes, such as EASA's X-02 Wyvern, the Fenrir sported a large airframe. Now we don't know what the exact measurements were, but we can take a rough estimation when comparing it to the Wyvern's confirmed measurements. So far, we believe the Fenrir measures in at around 27 meters in length, 18.4 meters in width, and 4.8 meters in height. Analyzing its design, the Fenrir's wings utilizes a polyhedral cropped delta configuration with bent wingtips, a V-tail, canards, and dual air intakes. Another peculiar feature of the Fenrir is the mouth-like pod beneath its cockpit, which houses the frontal landing gear. The Fenrir was also capable of executing tight angle of attacks and VTOL capabilities thanks to its dual thrust vectoring engines. Its technology proved to be highly advanced for its time. Instead of utilizing a flight stick, the pilot was able to control the plane's movements with their thoughts using the Connection for Flight Interface System, or Coffin, as seen with Grunder's ADF-01 Falcon. The Fenrir's main weapons consisted of dual autocannons and short-range missiles. In addition to this, it also boasted a vast arsenal of lethal special weapons, special air-to-air -air or air-to-surface missiles, and a small-scale version of the Gleipnir's SWBM. For more info on the SWBM and how it works, head on over to my Gleipnir lore video. There will be a link down in the description. The Fenrir's developers also created an experimental microwave weapon that could be equipped on the superfighters. The system functioned through the intersection of microwave energy beams generated by a nearby ground station and the Fenrir itself. When in range, the system created a ball of high-intensity microwaves that homed in on the engines of enemy aircraft. The intense energy would cause the enemy's engines and fuel system to overheat and explode. Lastly, her engineers installed a watered-down version of the optical camouflage system used by the Gleipnir. This system worked by taking the background behind the airframe and projecting it around the Fenrir, rendering it invisible. Said system further improved the aircraft's stealth capabilities by reducing its engine noise, 
allowing it to make surprise attacks on unsuspecting enemies. Unlike the Gleipnir, however, where its system could function on its own, this downgraded system needed a ground-based energy emitter in order to function. The advanced arsenal of weapons, combined with sophisticated hardware and software, made the Fenrir a formidable fighter. But a fighter jet this advanced required an exorbitant amount of money to develop. LASAS military leader Diego Gaspar Navarro funded and directed the project that led to the creation of this remarkable superjet. However, Navarro's goal for funding the Fenrir was not to overcome Aurelia's rising ace, Gryphus I. Instead, his ultimate goal was to increase arms sales by mass-producing and selling the Fenrir to nations around the world. All of this stems back to the Laysathian Civil War. Because Navarro controlled a large interest in his nation's arms industry, he was able to amass a substantial fortune off of weapon sales that profited during the Civil War. These funds were then used to create the Gleipnir and its earlier prototype, the Gander, the test beds for the upcoming Fenrir project. As soon as the Civil War was wrapping up, Navarro wanted to continue profiting off of arms sales even after the Civil War ended. He misappropriated the relief aid money received from Aurelia and incited the war-weary Laysaths to invade Aurelia under the pretense that their neighbor benefited from the suffering they had to endure during the Civil War. By the time Aurelian forces reclaimed their lost capital, Griswold, Navarro retreated to Archelon Fortress, located at Sentry Island, in order to check on the progress of the Fenrirs. Four units were finished and ready for deployment while the high-powered microwave weapon was finishing development at Cobalt Cave. Navarro then returned to his homeland and began plans to unveil the Fenrir at Allendal, the capital city of Laysath. Navarro held the conference in a stadium complete with a two-scale model Fenrir and a video screen broadcasting the live demonstrations of the Fenrirs dogfighting against the invading Aurelian air squadrons. He contacted Laysath's elite Alex squadron to head to Archelon Fortress and pilot these finished units. While Elect Squadron successfully reached the stronghold, the high-powered microwave weapon was destroyed while it was being transported from Cobalt Cave. By the time Gryphus and Aquila Squadron reached Sentry Island to end the war, Navarro kicked off the reveal of the Fenrir at Allendal and began broadcasting the battle between Aurelia Squadrons and the four Fenrirs. Both sides proceeded to engage in a hectic dogfight. Despite their superior technology, however, all four Fenrirs were shot down by Gryphus I. However, the battle wasn't over, as there was a fifth Fenrir unit taking off from within Archelon Fortress, carrying valuable battle data. If the unit escapes, Navarro would have the data necessary to continue manufacturing and improving upon the Fenrir's battle capabilities. Unfortunately for Navarro, he would not get his way, as Gryphus I quickly intercepted and destroyed the last Fenrir bringing an end to the entire war, and with it, Navarro's delusions. With the destruction of the fortress and the Fenrirs playing live at Navarro's unveiling event, Lay Sathian citizens were outraged. They stormed in on Navarro and proceeded to destroy the Fenrir model. Navarro's fate remains unknown after all of this. Some say he was executed by the citizens on the spot, Others claim he escaped and fled Laysath, where he continues to hide from his crimes that he committed against his own people. Regardless, Navarro's ambitions and selfish greed for manufacturing a next-generation fighter that the world had never seen before never came to fruition. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please intercept and destroy the like and subscribe button if you wish to see more lore videos. You can follow me on Twitter and my Discord server where I post updates, drawings, and take requests. I also have a second channel, Salutis Live, where I play games, react, and chat with you every Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, my name is Salutis Eversol, and I will see you guys next time. Soul out.